Hello everyone, welcome to order flow trading with Robert Rosa. Please give me short feedback if you can see and hear me according to my configurations. Everything should work fine, but if you can just give me quick feedback would be great. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I got a Hello Rafael, nice to see you. All is good, perfectly, Rafael. Hello Said, nice to see you. Then we are also going to start. Let me just arrange some more things. See, perfect. Well, then we go ahead. So today, like every Thursday, 3 p.m. Central European time, starting um, yeah, order flow trading with me, Robert Rosa. For everyone who doesn't know me yet, I started trading at the age of 13. That was around 1995. I co-founded my first investment company at the age of 17 with two partners in Frankfurt, Germany. Actually, these two people also taught me about the investment business, alternative investments, hedge funds, private equity, managed accounts. And well, with them together, I started to trade the S&P future still through the telephone at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And it was at that time the real S&P, not the mini future. And I well, was a witness of the transformation from um, floor trading actually to online trading. So I'm very aware about the changes and how fast it can be that the trading strategy or trading way is not working anymore because of technology. In, uh, I sold my shares in that company a couple years later and in 2004 I moved to China where I set up my second investment company with a Chinese partner. We had uh, under management over 100 million US dollar. We, I had a team of 30 um, you know, traders, analysts and project managers well and if you are quite successful in china then well you always get trouble look at a jack ma and so on so i was detained in 2011 may for yeah so to say outsmarting the chinese finance system and i spent the next seven years and seven months in chinese detention center and prison i was released in december 2018 um and well uh, after that time, I also discovered Bookmap, which was a great tool since that day on, I am actually using it. And well, I started to write a book. That's what you do when you get out of prison. You can also find the cover on the top right. Unfortunately, it's only available, available in German. It's called Dragon Years. It became a top 10 best-selling book in Germany at that time. And well, you're yeah, sort of proud of this. So you can see me in my handcuffs. And now I'm running actually a trading community and um, developing proprietary trading tools. If you, you can find more about me on robertrosa.com and there is the German speaking community and also a link to an English speaking community. You can find it here, school.com traders mindset. You will get updates about bookmap, about my trades that I'm doing, actually real trades, even if you make a loss. It's for, totally for free and most of them are very um, yeah, keen to learn more about bookmap. You can find me on YouTube as well and on Twitter. But now, most importantly, before we start trading, I always want to emphasize this. You are responsible for your trade. Do not copy other traders. Do not make other people responsible for your own mistakes. And um, we are going into the general disclosure. All Bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice, no recommendations. Risk Disclosure, trading futures, equities and digital currencies involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily in indicative of future results. So now let's have a look um, to the markets. We'll get out of this. So, so. Now let's see who's already here and our Chat room, Raphael, best greetings to Switzerland. Said, hello. Michael, hello. Alois Santa, hello. Luca Piri. <laughs> 
Well, we have a very famous person in the chat right now. Former GT3 World Championship winner Luca Piri. And well, we used to work together and well, I was sponsor of the Racing Box team and we were together in the Le Mans Racing Series. So, honor to have you here, Luca. Amazing. That was a great time. Um, racing our Ferraris and well, what uh, the, the prototypes and Lamborghini uh, in Valle Unga. I still remember these great, amazing times. So, whoever of you is into car racing, GT3, Le Mans, well, here's a world championship winner with us, Luca. Luca from Italy, yeah. Soon I will come to visit you again, back to Roma or Tuscany. Now let's have a look um, to the markets. It's now well, 25 minutes before opening, so we have to do our basic um, education. If we look into um, yeah, the S&P 500 future, most importantly, I have my, so to say, here yeah, my sheet cheat where I do my homework. Today is 18th. And well, I want to get the information about the opening price. Unfortunately, the market is not open yet. Then I want to have the settlement price. This we can find out now. And of course, the initial balance, which is the high and low of the first 30 minutes of the trading day. Then I want to have the delta to see, to compare if it is a volatile day or if it is more quiet day. For me, it's important to know if I should um, short the highs or buy the pullbacks in a trend. The settlement price, um, yeah, very important information always. You will find this one on the website of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Over here, markets, a mini S&P, settlement price, and we find it here, 5062.25. So why is this uh, price important? Because actually it's not the settlement price of today, because this will be done in the last, last 30 seconds of the trading day. Um, it's a settlement price of yesterday, but I still branded it as today because then I know I put it in today. According to this price, uh, margin regulations will be um, calculated for bigger institutions if they have to add more funds to their accounts or if they can withdraw funds to comply with the um, maintenance margin regulations from the exchanges and the brokers. And then, of course, also the PL of that day will be calculated. And we know that this point is many times very valid support and resistant zone. Ah, CLM. Good, 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 good. Very nice. Exactly. I will do this immediately. CLM. Yeah, this one is getting a little bit dry, but I will still leave it open. CLM, of course, a lot more liquidity. So if you once, sometimes you forget to roll over, you see here on the right side, the order book is very thin. Yeah, I mean, it's still tradable, but here we can see we have a lot more size in the book. Okay, we close this. So the second important thing that you have to do before the business or trading day is starting. We have our favorite website, Trading Economics. I like this website because it's clean, simple and brings information down to the point. If you look at the calendar, you will find important um, news impact. Today we have nothing. Fridays, some news today, nothing of important well fed bowman speech some speeches existing home sales maybe this will have some influence at um, 4 pm so should be carefully for other sectors like energy nothing of interest for us right now so let's have a look at the um bigger point 
of the market. Uh, as you know, I like to use um, trading view. We can see that we are really now at an important zone of the uptrend where the uptrend is still in play until we actually break the support and resistance zones. I did um, different analysis on different charts for this market. Let's see. I wanted to have one long term chart. No, it's also not this one. Here, exactly. Now I have on this chart, I draw some anchored VWAPs. It's a low here, low here, low here. And we actually now at the center point of this anchored VWAP. We broke through. Today will be an interesting day if we really close below this area. Then we could say that the short term downtrend, uh, that the short, short term uptrend is broken. And we're actually looking on the um, yeah, downside. Go to one hour chart. We can see here I draw this um, volume profile zones. And for me, interesting, the high volume nodes each time. They are actually very accurate support and resistance zones. On the upside, we can add the VWAP here. Um, and before you forget it, um, next Tuesday, 9 p.m. Central European time, or I think it's 3 p.m. Eastern time, I will have a bookmap webinar with Bruce together and we are going into detail into trading the uh, VWAP and anchored VWAP and um, trade management. Hugo, hello guys, Robert's community is really recommended. Thank you very much. That's nice. Hello, hi my drive, hi hedge fund manager. <laughs> 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 so now let's see who is here on Discord. Also, many people come. Hi, Rob, a hedge fund manager, CMJ, E, C, Z. Great. Now let's go a little bit deeper into the view. You know, I like to use the one minute chart. And you can see here, I always extend, going back to the one hour chart. I'm extending this um, point of control lines or um, high volume nodes so I actually can see them here on the one minute chart and they actually act for me very good as support and resistance zones. I have here the um, regular trading hours which is starting yeah, according to 3.30 p.m. CET until 10.15. Now let's have a look at the extended trading hours, electronic trading hours. It started here overnight. We are still on the upside a little bit. I'm not trading the electronic trading hours. Really, I'm living according to um, US time zones. We can see we have the bottom here. We started to hit this at 50.63 on the upside. And luckily, finally, you see actually how well these um, virgin point of controls are working on the tip, basically. Yeah. We had the high. Again here, you can trade them multiple times. If you actually only each second time you are, um, you get a trade like this with a very low risk to reward ratio, very low stop, you actually start to make money. And for the trading day today, we have these lines in play, the upside 50.84, 50.85, I'm looking for shorts. We are now a little bit um, up. So we are actually could have a gap close play. And if we have a gap close, I would simply go long at the close. Now we have to enter here the settlement price. Important at 50.62. 50.62.25. Interesting, very interesting zone. And also no coincidence. The settlement price, the closing price is in conjunction with the point of control. 
and well this is a nice support zone which we can basically trade as for longs we will see this later on book map i will double check these lines um, to see if we have similarities 50 62 can we already see something in the book 62 we see a little bit liquidity here on the upside 80 81 of course um, this is um, book map 80 81 is this zone i'm heading back to the um, regular trading hours which will start in 15 minutes then i can better see the um, gap place now i want to show you um, two features which i actually um, discovered and first of all we had a call um, on monday with a book map because as you remember i had a trading problem it was um, over two weeks ago it was a fast market i had orders in the in the market and news came and actually two orders were filled and I got also stopped out. Everything is fine. But with the third order, my stop loss was not triggered. And I was using this brackets um, order. So we actually went into the trading logs and we figured out that the trades got rejected by Rhythmic. It was not a problem from Bookmap. So now we are still investigating what was the problem. But there is one thing that you have to keep in mind. Actually, I... I never looked here into the details, connection details. Well, basically nothing is changing, yeah. But somehow last year a new button came, bracket stop orders convert to market on reject. Point was my stop order was rejected. So they simply canceled the order. But I don't want that. If I, Even if the order is rejected, I simply want to get out of the position by all means. And you basically have to click this and this. These two um, buttons must be clicked. Most likely, um, this will be a default um, functionality in later bookmap versions because people don't know that, even we didn't know that. And I never actually checked my connection because once the system is working, um, you just don't look at it. Yeah. So keep that in mind if you don't want to get the same problem. Click both buttons in your configuration if you're a Rhythmic Trader. Then uh, second second um, feature that I actually like da, 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 um, configure add-ons. If you want to have multi bracket orders, where well, we got it, multi brackets. This feature very simple. If you cannot find it, you simply go to manage add-ons, and you just choose it here from this um, add-ons and install it before i was basically trading with an sl of five ticks um, with a profit of 12 but many times my profit target was it and the market still continued moving in my direction so now i basically trade one lot which means three contracts for me and i entered uh, i end will enter with two and take profit after 12 ticks and I will let a third contract run, give it more room to maybe get 20 or even more ticks. So basically then I would trail my stop loss at the, um, at the uh, anchored VWAP. Hello, cool beans. Nice to see you here. So, and then I also would like to um, explain a little bit about the iceberg orders and stop orders that you can see here. And, well, I went quite deeply with um, Bruce into that last Monday. It was um, very interesting. The red basically are the um, stops that are triggered, yeah. You can actually, if you have Rhythmic and MBO data, this is also basic homework that you should do and read more about it. Many times I'm surprised how little traders actually know about market regulations and market structure. You should actually read and inhale yeah, this website and actually read the 
um, information and the rules and regulations of the exchange. It will give you a completely different confidence about trading if you know what it is. So and everything is actually described on the CME website and in a very, I think, clear manner. Even if your English is not your native language like mine, but it's quite simple English. And if not, you just put it into ChatGPT and it will translate it to you. MBO data, we have each single information. If we have, if we see on the right side, like 1000 contracts on the um, bid side, we can know if this is one order with 1000 contracts or 1000 orders with each one contract. Yeah. So this is the information market by price, which you basically get from CQG or other brokers are not suitable for trading. And each order also has an ID. Yeah, um, identification ID, order ID. And with that, we can see if this is a stop order or an iceberg order. Iceberg orders basically is already, um, if you if you know, if you look into the ocean and you see an iceberg, you only see the top, but you don't know what is below the surface of the water. And that is huge. And these are iceberg orders. You only see a small part of that and you cannot know how much is actually behind this order. But we can actually, because of the order ID, detect these. And now I will scroll into this um, order a little bit. We can see each step. Let's see if we can have it here. Yeah, nice example. So now we have here the lifetime of an iceberg order. D means the iceberg order was detected. But it's not filled yet. So we see the blue line that indicates the the lifetime cycle of this iceberg order. T means transmitted. So four lots were transmitted, eight lots, and the order continued, continued, continued until the end. E means executed. So this iceberg order went through this process. Interesting information. Then maybe later if the um, trading is starting, we can see that the iceberg orders also are moving. Maybe they change the limit price or they do not get filled. And then we have well, a C for cancellation. So what is the use of this information for us? The use is simply to know where is the big money going into the market. Yeah, many times we can see like yesterday, iceberg orders are moving up and the price is actually changing this order. So the market is going up. Or if we have huge support and resistance lines, like probably I would suggest later here, 63, 62, 83, 85, according to our chart, a lot of iceberg orders will pop up. And this can give us good um, ideas if these support and resistance zones are actually valid or not. If there are no orders, basically it also has no, um, it's not important. Um, Ugo Agurin, is it possible to use multi-bracket orders with cross BBO add-on? Mm. Good question. I don't know. Maybe someone here from um, from Bookmap can answer this. Well, to add information to the bracket orders, these are server-sided orders. That means if you place a um, multi-bracket order in Bookmap, the orders will be on the Rhythmic server. So even if your computer is crashing or you turn off uh, book map, your order is still in place. That's actually very good. Hedgehomena, what is ice block order? Well, like I said, ice block order, um, iceberg order is something like the order that is in the book, but we cannot see the huge, um, the magnificent, well, uh, the, the size, the real size. It's like a hidden order. Yeah, I, I guess it doesn't work with cross trading. Yeah, Aloisander, I believe so too. That's only for that chart where you place the order. But to really get some confirmation about this, simply um, go to ask this question on the bookmap um, channel. I think there is also uh, somewhere. Um, blah, blah, blah. Somewhere a room for that. Have to look at this if there are information. Yeah, you're welcome. And if you have any questions, feel free simply to ask. 
Let me see how many viewers we have already. Oh, over 50 and a lot in Discord. That's nice. Well, and you can also hit the like button. Yeah, we have so many viewers and only 15 likes. That's not enough. Okay, without to ask, support at bookmap.com. Yeah, Aloy Santa, definitely. I mean, it's an important information, not that people believe this is um, working and then at the end it's not. So, one second. Now, five minutes till start. We can see liquidity is coming in and our zones of interest are here and here. And we can see a lot of liquidity around this level of 80. We can see here in that picture the anchored VWAP, or not the anchored VWAP, it's actually the VWAP starting from recording start. It was quite early this morning. And we can also see many times the market is moving very smoothly according to the VWAP yeah. and its standard deviations. This is basically my niche in trading. I'm trying to figure out where the algos are starting to buy and sell so I can get into that market. Basically, if you trade here this VWAP 1, 2, 3, 4, you have a very good um, chance of success. Oh, okay, perfect. Alois, yeah, they are in the knowledge base. This is basically the first step to go to get the information about Bookmap. Um, do you have to buy several indicators from Bookmap? Which one would you recommend to us? Um, Hedge Fund Manager, this is basically depends on your trading style and your trading market. For example, if you trade the NQ, yeah, I will get it on here. It's just an example, yeah, there is no right or wrong. But the NQ has somehow, I will not call it mail function, but they are messing up the order book with so called bracket orders. This here, this noise. We have to filter out this noise to get actually clear view on the NASDAQ. It's very messy. So for this add-on, we have, for example, settings, configure add-ons, Trader Map Pro, and you can actually filter these orders. Yeah, so it will create a second chart. here and we get a later you will see a better view if a market pulse for example i'm having the market pulse here i simply switch it off during live streams because um, it creates somehow some noise here <laughs> and distraction um, basically the add-on that you use for that is uh, let me go to the bookmap marketplace which concludes everything. This MBO bundle, I think this contains um, stops an iceberg. We, exactly, you need RISMIC data, but that's not a problem. Stop and icebergs on chart. What I'm having liquidity tracker, trader map pro, market pulse algorithm bundle for stocks and futures. Still loading. Let's see. Um
with rhythmic data you can't get the overnight VWAP correct only from when you open the platform. My drive, um, exactly. That is, um, well, the data is simply too large. Um, there is also no way to save or to record this when your system is not yet possible. You simply have to turn on your computer and let it um, run. Yeah, maybe Ugo, sometimes you know, learning by doing, simply try and error. So now we see um, market opening. First thing that I'm going to do is to add the VWAP. calculating let's see if we have any surprises here in liquidity and why am I still having an order in that market that's interesting cancel all okay and I place an order somehow I started to place an order and I did not know what I did actually well, turn this off was well, uh, not my intention So no surprises in liquidity. We have 80. Wow, there's a lot of selling pressure. Oh, let's have the chart on the other side. Probably a quick gap close run to the settlement price. I think the 62 is a very interesting um, area for longs. We enter the opening here at 74. Right now for me, exactly minutes after the opening, um, I am basically not trading. I'm trying to get a feeling for the market. Also to get a feeling how the VWAP actually reacts on orders. Sometimes it's a little bit choppy. Like for example, yesterday, if you saw my trading um, diaries, I record them on Loom and publish them, for example, in here in Discord channel, my Discord channel or in the community. I simply somehow last two days, I was all that my stop loss was always triggered exactly on the tick and then the market turned into my direction really unlucky the only thing that i found out which is uh, which changed actually the strategy is valid it's not a problem of the strategy simply my stop loss was too small but if you look the the um, vix volatility index definitely increased from 13 to 17 18 right now but still, after two days, I'm not willing to change or adjust my um, stop configuration. I'm just, well, sometimes you're just not lucky in trading. Yeah, You are right with your analysis, your strategy is working, you see that. Just always this one tick. And then also, never took my take profit. Well, always the market stopped like one ticket before my TP. Simply, yeah, annoying. Oh, there is a way to get the data if you use Rhythmic. It is a DX feed historical data package for 14 bucks. And you can get the overnight VWAP as well. Although, Santa, that is interesting. Then I have um, I have to check this out. You always learn something new. Well, this is Chinese. My I, uh Wahui Shaw Edian Chungwen met 
I used to live in China, but um, I have to pass on that. So now we are going close to this level of 60. That is interesting. Um, keep in mind the gap close. Uh, this is very interesting turning point. The settlement price in combination with the point of control is um, could be a valid um, long signal. And we don't see a lot of liquidity yet here in the market. Let's see what's going to happen in that area, the 60. Now we are the settlement price and basically here at this level 60, still market goes further. Stop run with 489, yeah, that is something nice to see so that we could get now probably a turnaround. But there's no nothing coming into the market, no liquidity still. Okay, now we can see here is an open iceberg order, 25. It's not filled yet. The markets, we see buyers are coming in, yeah. Was triggered. Still more icebergs are coming. Let me see if I have the settings correctly. Basically, I have a threshold for the icebergs. Ah, now I have to put in my threshold, otherwise I get too many information and I only want to have the big information. Or the important information. Threshold 50, okay, close. Well, that is basically unusual that the market really simply runs through the settlement price. The big picture. Probably next support then here at 47. Now what am I going to do? I'm for me, like I said, the initial balance is important and this is the high and low. From the first 30 trading minutes, we have the high at 50.74 right now and the low not figured out yet. But it will give me an indication um, what is going on. If this market is continuing now from, yeah, we have 75 down to 51 is already over 20. So that's sort of a larger initial balance, yeah. If the mark if the first half hour is over, then basically I would look to actually buy the lows and sell the um, sell the highs because I wouldn't believe that the market will go into a special direction at that time. We can compare it and compare it in this way. If we have a IB that is very narrow, we can see it as like a uh yeah a pressure point a lot of orders would be accumulated and then the second half or if the market is leaving this range it will continue into one direction so we're going to have a trend right now we're already actually um developing a trend right now or we already have a downtrend and then normally if something goes down there will also be a correction yeah and we can see more and more larger icebergs are coming into play this one is also open here quickly executed here right now this is a market if the market opens like this i am not interested in doing anything yeah i'm just watching until this pressure is over Till we find a reasonable bottom okay 50 here more and more liquidity is coming
more and more. This is now a level where we could probably consider as a support zone to get basically a correction. We can also see the icebergs continuing. Um, slow down. Do you pay attention to correlation with NQ when trading ES or do you just focus on the chart in front of you? I basically only focus on the chart in front of me. Um, I do not pay attention to the NQ if I trade ES, but I pay attention to the SPY here, yeah, to the ETF, to see if there if we have certain liquidity which is not displayed in the future market so if we have their um, correlations or differences yeah which i can use and we are also calculating the option prices for the s p from the zero dte options the options that expire today to actually see we said we have a sort of volume profile and where we have a lot of volume well basically the market is in a fair zone these are these green buttons if the market goes outside of this zone and the price or the volume will not go with it, basically we have an oversold or overbought market. It's just something to support. Yeah, It's not um, a trading indicator in that way. And right now the information is not valid according to our rules after 4 o'clock or 4 p.m. or CET or it's 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now, and we could see, interesting, we saw this liquidity coming into the market and now we have this sort of correction. To go long into this area would not be right because there is simply no liquidity. It, no, it's just like an empty hole. And now we see buying pressure or buying power is coming into the market at 50 and now we see the pullback. And basically the pullback goes to the anchored VWAP here or the session VWAP starting at 3.30. And we can see, interesting, the iceberg orders are moving up. That is nice from here, zack, moving higher, moving higher. And are in place here. That is a nice sign that the market actually is getting pushed up, that people are believing now this is a fair price to get into. Well, over 60 people here, 65, very nice. And don't forget to hit the like button. See, very nice. We have the liquidity in play coming. We have increasing or limit. The limit were changed with the iceberg orders going up, up, up. And then basically, if they cannot get filled, maybe they cancel them and move the market up. So we can see the buying pressure is coming in. Nice to see. A nice how to inter interpret to analyze the um, iceberg orders and see the value behind it we didn't have that sign here here yeah? nowhere just started to happen here and that is what i want to see if we found the bottom Then we have here 295, 255, these are already 500, these are larger orders. And now we see liquidity is coming here around that session VWAP. Probably we know the algos are starting to give selling pressure. It's a fair value to sell actually here if they believe the market is going down. For everyone who is just arrived now, next Tuesday, 10, no, 3 
p.m. CE uh, Eastern Time or 9 p.m. Central European Time. We are going to have a book map webinar about VWAP trading and trade management. Now we can see how the market actually is eating up this iceberg order. Yeah. The blue line indicates, okay, there is a lot of buying pressure. These are things that we basically cannot see on a chart. And still here also buying, buying. Well, nice to see the iceberg order was hit. Uh, not here, and after this, buying pressure comes into the market. So then, actually, to go short here is very um, dangerous. If you see this, there's also a way how to actually filter these trades. We now buying, buying, buying comes in. And well, you can avoid trades at the VWAP, for example, if you have this correlation. Now we see that was the oversold reaction. And now probably going back to this standard deviation. What I think triggered the long, if I would assume we have a lot of um, iceberg orders here, larger orders, and then probably somebody got some pressure here and simply did not want to wait with the order and just changed the iceberg order to a, probably a market order to actually move the market upward. Yeah, This is what I would consider. Well, it would be a reasonable explanation. Because we can see here something ended here from the iceberg order, but there is no execution sign. And then somehow probably it moved up, yeah. Now if we see these yeah, pearls, so to say, they're simply going straight up. There is some buying pressure from people, from larger institutions that have to go into the market. Maybe they cover their shorts or whatever. They think the price is fair. We don't know the reason behind it. We can only see that 
people want to buy aggressively at that moment. And also we have to consider at the moment we have a very thin book. Yeah? Only two digits, this makes the market very volatile. The last weeks we always had at least three digits here around continuously. Um, so this is why we have fast markets and I believe this is of course in the result of um, what happened during the weekend in Israel and Iran. So of course there is a fear in the market. Also interesting here at the standard deviation we just had, we hit the line and then the sell-off came three points basically these are very nice trades that i like to do just go place my order here very um, narrow stop loss and then try to get these moves on the other side now we see this uptrend what we have to do we simply have to add an anchored vweb to let the market run. What we can see if you add the VWAP at the bottom or at the daily low, we can see the market is moving up, makes the retest and then this is your entrance point. VWAP from the bottom and the standard deviation, a nice long signal. Again, where did the market go? Exactly at the VWAP. And then back to your question, hedge fund manager, what did this buying pressure trigger? I believe it was a touch on the VWAP. This is when algorithms, algorithmic trading is starting to buy and the market is moving up. Same here, then back to the standard deviation, like I mentioned, and back to the VWAP. These are very, very nice, sweet trades. And this is why I also use the bracket, um, multi-bracket order. I would get out here with my first two contracts and the third one, or the third lot, I would basically cover here. Now we're actually expecting to go back to the VWAP. What time frame are you using on the left? Well, basically there is no time frame, uh, Mr. Cage. It's simply a uh, tick chart. Yeah, I'm just scrolling in and out to get the bigger picture, but there is no specific time frame. We see each tick. On the right, it's a one minute chart. Anorak, um, what are the white line? It's basically the anchored VWAP from the bottom of the day. Like on the right side, I just enter an uh, anchored VWAP here. That indicates me as long as the market is above this line, we are simply in an uptrend. And the um, pink uh, lines or the purple lines is the session VWAP starting at 9.30 Eastern time, it's the market opening or 3.30 um, CET time and these lines are the standard deviations, the first and second standard deviation. Now we can see we simply hit the VWAP again and we see some buying pressure coming. Now it's a question, 
is this still a valid uptrend or is this let's say correction finished and we go again back to the lows now the market is struggling here if we break below the trend is over but actually the market is not doing it you can see and then this is my niche I would go long here and let it run and again I would get my take profit here I'm out of the business and would have made my money two nice trends to the uh, trades would be here and here and eventually here if you well I doubt if you really get into the market if you place your order here Well, Anwar, um, the, actually, um, there is no difference because a VWAP, every, each VWAP has a starting point. I just call it session VWAP because it's uh, the starting point is at the beginning of the trading session. Anchored VWAP has an individual starting point that I choose according to my expertise. For example, when I know we have a low, I would enter a VWAP here to actually confirm the continuation of the trend and to find entry points. I am not a breakout trader, so if I know the market changed, where should I enter the market? I, ha I want to take as less risk as possible. And then I basically have these points here and here to enter on this uptrend. And you can see very little risk. You can work with very tiny stops. So the end card view is simply a point where I decide I want to enter. You can use um, events, for example, if you have news releases, you can enter an end card view web there basically any time. Yeah? I can also put one here, here, here. The question is, when does it make sense? And again, market is moving to the standard deviation. Again, nice short scenario. Already three, four points, I would have made my profit here also. Exactly, there were a lot of buyers here. That was the turnaround zone. We had the sell off, and there was no liquidity, so there was nothing to trade. And then we saw the iceberg orders coming into the market, and we saw the liquidity here. And then basically, the trend was over, and the long trend was initiated. I try in English, no problem. Well, not everyone is native English speaker, same like me. I actually switched from Quant Tower to Bookmap and Trading View. And can you show how to use the Anchor VWAP in Trading View? Is it an indicator? No, basically, a VWAP is no indicator, it's a benchmark. Yeah, but it's here in the um, category of uh, indicators, of course. But it's a standard tool, you just go on the left side, I think it's um, here, projection. Anchored VWAP, you just click the star and you have it here in your favorite toolbox. That's it. And there is not much to configure. If you look at it here, it's this VWAP. You simply click on that symbol and enter it anywhere, like here, for example. And you can make right click settings and you can add the multi bands if you like, first and second. Change the style, visibility in which charts you want to see it color and you can save it as a template that's it there is not more to it
So now the first um, 30 minutes of the trading day is over and I'm going to calculate actually the initial balance. We have here initial balance low at 50, 50.75. I will enter that into my table. And the upside is here at 5075. Opening price fifty seventy four. So and now we have a delta of twenty four, which is compared to the last trading days larger. Yeah. So according to my theory and my understanding, I do not think that we will go much below the I below or much behind the I below. I would look to find short scenarios here in this area maybe a little bit above a little bit below and long setups here because i believe most of the business is um, already done of course that's not a guarantee yeah like i said news can come anything can happen we know the situation right now but this is how I think and well if I believe that I can find short setups here it's possibility for me much higher. Wow, over almost 90 viewers. Amazing. So you still can hit, hit the like button, yeah? I still can also make some um, small advertisement. If you really want to come into our English-speaking trading group, it's for free, of course, yeah? Over 100 member, I am posting my trades, and not only winners, I also make losers, yeah? Um, it's like this. VWeb Trades, Laura, she's also very active in um, the trading community in Bookmap. And well, it's starting to grow and we have a very good German speaking community with over 500 members. Very nice. And well, the English speaking group as well. It's completely free and I have some interesting, um, yeah, things that I'm going to start during the next next um, week, next month. And if anyone is um, near the German town of Stuttgart next week, there is a largest um, investment exhibition in Germany and I'm going to be a speaker there on Friday the 26th. So if anyone is around, come to the exhibition, to the invest and we can have a drink and we can get a book from me with my signature. So now we can see if we broke the anchored VWAP. And now the trend basically is over. The uptrend, yeah. And I think we are going now more and more into a Rotation, yeah. Now I would wait until the market is going to the initial balance low and then together with the second standard deviation, we have 50-50, we can also see liquidity is coming in here would be a nice um, trading setup, 
<laughs> I wish I can speak German. <laughs> well, it's a very complicated language, believe me. I really prefer to speak English. Somehow I can express myself a lot easier. Yeah, where are you from, South Star? Ah, I think that was uh, South Korea, if I remember correctly, or? You were there also last week. Now we can see again, well, we are going into that range. Yes, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Unfortunately, since I lived many years in Asia, I never have been to South Korea. But of course, when you are living in China, you learn a lot about K-pop, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I knew most of the K-pop um, singers and bands, but I don't remember their names, but I had to get used to it. <laughs> Ah, in Schweinfurt, Nick Nick, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the Europe, but Germany is the best country in Europe, yeah. Well, <laughs> depends on what you want to do, yeah. Um... <laughs> Try Swiss German. <laughs> yeah, well, that is uh, to roll the arrow like the uh, Swiss people are doing that is crazy. Um, Tess, how do you use the spy as a correlation? Well, I can tell you that. Now I want to see where do we have. Oh, okay, we also have a data error here. Non CP. Okay, interesting. So I have to look at the. Um, I'll go. Um, I'm trying to look where are huge liquidity zones. Sometimes you can find liquidity in the SPY that you cannot find in the future markets. So then I assume that the market will still go to huge liquidity areas. I'm, this is not big. Sometimes you really see huge orders here. And then the chance is quite high that the future market will also go into this direction but you cannot detect this liquidity in the future market. So this is what I'm looking for. And basically, um, yeah, option levels, like I said, normally we calculate the zero DTE options, the option volume. Um, but right now, as I see, there is somehow a bug. I don't know what's the problem. I have to talk to my coder later on. Then we can de detect if there is an overbought or oversold area. Uh, which software I used to stream? I have OBS, OBS Studio. I'm using that. OBS Studio and sometimes also Streamlabs if I want to have multi streams. In Discord, you have the basically the um, normal streaming function here. Yeah, that is um, just screen share, and it's doing this automatically. Hello, Mike. Nice to see you here. What is your opinion about Bitcoin split? Yeah, well, um, I really don't know. I mean, Saturday. I think Saturday is the hal halving. From Bitcoin, I don't know. I just remember everyone as the Bitcoin futures were um, launched at the CME. Everybody thought, okay, great, um, now we have futures on Bitcoin. And after that, the market crashed. We always have this saying, buy the rumor, sell the fact. I really don't know. 
from the logic point of view, of course, Bitcoin should increase because there is um, less supply. But in reality, I really don't know. I can tell you from myself, I'm invested in cryptos, in Bitcoin, Ethereum and other uh, tokens like Render, for example. And I'm very interested in Bitcoin or in cryptocurrencies. But from the trading point of view, I simply prefer future markets because they are um, or stock stocks um, or forex they are for me a bit more uh, transparent and easier to um, observe there's not so much fake going on so now we see an interesting level going to the initial balance high and the opening price and we can see larger iceberg orders coming into play we have this liquidity at 50 75 I would assume to look here for short scenarios in this area. Mike, thank you very much. Uh, that is uh, very nice to hear from you. Well, and still everyone can hit the like button. Very nice. Over 80 people and a lot in Discord. That is nice. So if there are um, no more questions, then I would also um, start to continue trading. And well, book next Tuesday 9 p.m. Central European time or 3 p.m. Eastern time New York time we are going to have a live webinar about VWeb trading and the um, yeah, trade management what ways we can use to trade or we see each other in our our community yeah English speaking community there will be um, nice progress Come join us, you will get updates about trades and about, well, ideas and new projects that I'm going to launch in November, uh, November, May, I mean. And I would say have a good day, have a nice um, training day, be successful, don't... Um, don't get a margin call yeah <laughs> always think about tomorrow when you trade today is today should not be your last day otherwise take care bye bye